All right, so one more example here of finding roots of complex numbers. And here we're going to find all the complex cube roots of 64. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to write 64 as a complex number. Well, we can write that as 64 plus 0i. We'll have to convert this to polar form. So it basically says you go over 64 on the real axis, and uh, we don't move up or down on the imaginary axis. All right, so um, we'll have to figure out our r value. But again, to get the r value, we would take 64 squared plus 0 squared. Well, if we simplify that, we'll just be left with 64. I think it's pretty easy to see in, our, in this case that our angle theta would just be theta equals 0. So OK, so it says when we rewrite this as a complex number, we can rewrite this as r, which is 64. And then we'll have cosine of 0 degrees plus i sine of, well, 0 degrees. All right, well, uh, if we want the cube roots, the cube roots will simply be taking, uh, we'll be letting n equals 3. So for cube roots, our n value will equal 3. And it says to find the cube roots, again, we'll just fill in our formula here. It says we would take our r value and take the cube root of that. So probably should write this elsewhere. I always run out of room. So using our formula, it says we would get the third root of 64. And then it says we would take cosine of the original angle, which is 0 degrees, plus 2 pi, or equivalently 360 degrees, times k all over our n value, which is 3, plus i sine of the same quantity. So we'll get 0 degrees plus 360 degrees times k all over 3. And now we just have to evaluate this for k equals 0, 1, we go up to uh, n minus 1, which would give us 2 in this case. So now we just have to uh, just simplify this formula for a few different values of k. All right, so if we use k equals 0, k equals 0, let's see, the cube root of 64 is going to be 4. Uh, if we plug in k equals 0, well, we would just be left with 0 in the numerator. So we would get cosine of 0 degrees plus i sine of 0 degrees. And well, let's see, cosine of 0, that's 1. See, I think I left out, let's make that a bracket. Cosine of 0, that's just going to give us 1. Sine of 0 is 0. So really, you're left with 4 times 1 plus uh, 0 times i would be 0, so we would have 0i, and we're simply left with the number 4. And hey, that makes sense. Uh, 4 is a complex number, and it's definitely a cube root of 64. So probably could have done that one without all this hard work. Um, let's do k equals 1. So if we do k equals 1, let's see, so going back up here to our, our nice little formula, it says we would have the cube root of 64, which is going to be 4. And then it says we would have, well, cosine of 360 degrees. But that would be divided by 3 plus i sine. OK, so again, when we plug in k equals 1, we'll just be left with 360 degrees. So it's 360 uh, over 3. And I think we can simplify this up a little bit. So this will be cosine of, let's see, 360 over 3. That'll be 120 degrees plus i sine of 120 degrees. Let's see. Um, we can always evaluate cosine of 120 and sine of 120. So let's see. So 120 degrees, I believe that would have a reference angle of 60 degrees. 
Cosine of 60 degrees is going to be 1 half, but in quadrant 2 we would get actually negative 1 half. Let's see, sine of 60 degrees is root 3 over 2. Um, equivalently, in the second angle, it's also still positive root 3 over 2. We could distribute out the 4, so 4 times negative 1 half would give us negative 2. The 4 over the 2 would just leave us with 2 times root 3 times the i. So there's another one of our roots. I should say our cube roots. That's what we're doing here. Um, so one last time, we'll have to just use our formula just one more time. Now plugging in k equals 2. So if we plug in k equals 2, again, we're still just going to get... So when we plug in k equals 2 into our formula, we still get the cube root of 64, which is 4. We'll get cosine of, well, 0 degrees, uh, 360 times 2. I guess let's write it out. Um, over 3 plus i sine of, we would have 360 um, again times 2 over 3 well we said that uh, 360 over 2, or excuse me, 360 over 3 that was going to be 120. 120 times 2 would give us 240 degrees plus i sine of the same thing, 240 degrees. And again, now it's just a matter of evaluating um, cosine of 240 and sine of 240. Well, there's 180. We would have to go another 60 degrees to have our net angle of 240 degrees. Well, again, the reference angle would be the same reference angle we just saw a second ago of 60 degrees. But now they're in quadrant 3, so they're both negative. Um, so let's see. So cosine of 60 degrees, that was 1 half, and root 3 over 2. So let's see. Um, cosine of 240 then is going to be negative 1 half, plus i sine of 240. Um, again, we'll be in quadrant 3, so we'll get negative root 3 over 2. And I think now if we uh, just multiply this out, 4 times negative 1 half will be negative 2. Um, 4 over 2 will be 2, but we've got the negative. So it looks like we'll get negative 2 root 3 times i, and that would be our other root. So now it looks like we've got a... Uh, it looks to me like we've got all of our roots. We found one of them to be 4. We've got negative 2 plus 2 root 3i, and then we have negative 2 minus 2 root 3 times i.